This program is made possible by support from the cities of Cathedral City, Indio, Palm Springs, Palm Desert, Rancho Cucamonga, and Rancho Mirage. Hey everyone, I'm Joel Green and welcome to Curiosity Quest Goes Green, the show that explores what you, the viewer, are curious about. Now today, our quest setter came to us from Yucca Valley, California. Seth wrote, Dear Joel, I'm curious, how do you recycle caps from water bottles? Well, Seth, obviously something that many of us deal with if we've ever opened a water bottle. Because of you, we're gonna take a journey all over Southern California to go on this quest. And it starts right here in Paris, California at the home of Global PET. So let's begin today's Curiosity Quest Goes Green. Global PET, and I'm here with Nadim. Now, Nadim, yeah. before we get started and see anything, I gotta know, people are curious, do we keep the caps on the bottles, or do we take the caps off? Keep the caps on the bottles, this way we can recycle it. What? Yeah. Well, wait a minute, I hear that you're supposed to take the caps off. No, you have to keep it on, because it's part of the weight of the bottles, but part of the recycling program. Now, is that everywhere across the country or just with your process? Well, not just me. Right now, uh, the country is more developed in the recycling side of it, and there's more awareness that, yes, you can take the caps and you can recycle it and end up having an uh, end product out of it. So leave the caps on. Leave the caps on, please. Yeah, <laughs> leave the caps on. Okay, so it might be different in your part of the country, but here, we're leaving the caps on. Yes, we are. All right, so when you get the bottles, do they all look like this? They're all bailed up? They're all bailed up. They first go, go get, get loose into the recycling centers. Then the recycling centers collect them and take them to a processing yard. Then the process, processing yard bails them mm -hmm. and send them to us. Okay. And they all start off like, like Start like that. How heavy are these, each one of these? Uh, probably an average of 1,200 pounds. 1,200 pounds. You and I could probably pick a couple of these up. Probably. Or probably not. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> so once they come here, what do you do with them? Uh, we take them to a bale breaker mm -hmm. where it breaks the bales. They become loose bottles. They go through a sortation program where we separate the, the clear from the green. And then it goes to our wash line where it floats the polypropylene and the labels and the caps away from the PET since the PET sinks and the polypropylene will close. Okay, so let's make sure the polypropylene is, are the, the plastic bottle, right? The bottle part? No. Oh. The PET is the bottle part. The polypropylene is the caps, like this. Okay. And the labels, like that. In the old days, they used to be paper. It's mm -hmm. no longer the case. Now it's polypropylene. Plastic, basically. Plastic. It is plastic. It's all plastic. Okay. We're focusing on the caps today. Does it matter what color the caps are? Not at all. Really? Not at all. No, so you'll separate matter. green bottles and, and uh, clear bottles, yeah. but you won't separate cap colors? No. Uh, the water does not uh, understand color. It's just going to float it. Uh, the cap's going to be floated, and the PET bottles are going to sink. Okay. Well, let's go check out the process. Cool. Should we keep our bottle caps on or take them off? I think you should probably keep them on. Why? Because if, if you're recycling them and there's a, still a little bit of water in there, you don't want it to spill out. Probably keep them on. Why? Because when you recycle the bottle, the bottle cap goes with it. I think you have to take them off because it might be another recycling bin. Um, on. Why? Um, because that can be recycled too. So take us through the bales on the other side. Okay, the bales that we just showed you earlier, we take them to a bale breaker. And the bale breaker breaks the bottles. And the bottles become loose and they go up the conveyor system all the way through and then it hits the metal detection. Oh, 
Then it goes to color sortation system where it takes the green out, the amber out, and other bottles that uh, that not belong there. Why would we have metal in the bottles? Well, in the bales, there's all sorts of products that don't belong there. So we have to go through a sortation system okay. to where it gets rid of all that stuff before it hits the grinding. So all we're doing is getting ready for grinding right now. Everything you're doing, the whole setup, is just to get ready where you can start sorting. We haven't done anything with the bottle caps yet. You have not. The bottle caps are going to go in in the bottle. Oh. Put the bottle, and while you're sorting, you keep them on the line. Okay. So you grind them, then it takes them to the wash line. Go check that out. <laughs> Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Can you believe this? It takes 450 years for just one plastic bottle cap to break down. What are we looking at right here? We're looking at the caps and the labels that's being separated uh, from uh, the first tank. Uh, this one ends here. Uh, all the propylene and the caps end up being sent to another facility. I, it's funny because I don't even see caps. I know you shredded them or grabbed them. <laughs> but you shredded them, so I can't even make out caps in here at all. No, you can you can see it. I mean you really have to look. It's all there. It's okay. part of part of the label. Yeah. Well, so when you send them off to the next recycler, will they separate the labels from the bottle caps? Yes, they do. They do? They do. So you're gonna keep the the uh, PET, the bottles here, and we're gonna take these with us. Yes. So, I mean, not like me, really. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not putting them on my car. That's right. Anything. Yeah, yeah. But I appreciate it, Nadine. Our next stop is Colton. Thank you. How do you separate the bottle caps from all the other stuff? Put it in the recycling bin. Um, have them go on a conveyor belt, and then have some people go and separate them. Um, I think it's done with um, special machines because a lot of people can do it. It's hard work. <laughs> well, they could put it in sections and they could reuse it in different ways. So they put it in different sections. Put them in different places. So we've made our way out here to Colton, California. We're at Omni, and I'm here with Joe. Thanks for having us out here. Sure, thanks for being here. So obviously we have lots of these sacks here. We do, yeah. <laughs> filled with, and, I, and I'm looking at this material too, and I'm thinking, how in the world are we gonna separate out the bottle caps from the actual labels? Because when I'm looking at this, most of this looks like labels. There, there is a large percentage of labels in it, uh, definitely by volume, but by weight there is a, def, there's more cap and bottle residue that's still on here. Okay. So, so what we're going to do is be able to separate the three primary uh, components of this grade are the bottle caps, the labels, and some PET residue. Okay. And to, when combined, they're not compatible. So our, our task is to be able to separate these items to make them usable commodities. And we're focusing on the bottle caps We're here. focusing on the cap itself because that makes up actually the majority of this material. All right, so let's get started. Okay, great. Cool. All right, so Joe, how are we taking all the bottle caps out of this mess? It's a multi-step process where we're using a variety of different sorting techniques, including air separation, including a float sink process where the materials are introduced into water, where we take advantage of the different bulk densities of them, where the bottle caps are going and the labels are going to float and the PET is going to sink. So that allows us to separate those materials. And then we use air separation to be able to take out the labels. So it's, it's not a real simple, easy... No, it's a multi-step process. Multi-step process. So the first step would be this, right? That's correct. Yes, you're an integral part of the process. Thank you. Yeah, all right, well, I'm, I need a break. Okay. <laughs> fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Each year, 17 billion barrels of oil are used to make water bottles. That's enough oil to run a million cars for a year. So he's physically, like, like literally getting in there and What's right. he looking for? Right, he's looking for any obvious contamination. 
if the, the small items you would not be able to pull out, but if there's any large piece of contamination that could potentially damage the equipment downstream, yeah. that's what he's looking to be able to identify and pull that out. So that's a magnet he's just putting, I would wonder what he was doing in there. Right, so he, he, he runs the magnet through the material to be able to identify any large piece of metal. Ah. And to be able to catch it at this stage. And then he's looking for bigger stuff too, right? Right, right. There's any tree limbs or any whole bottles, anything that isn't supposed to be in the material. It's amazing because I don't see bottle caps at all. I'm... And they, yeah, the difficult part, they're, they're in there. They're actually hidden. If you look at them, they're usually the most colorful component of the mix. In this oh, yeah. case, where you have the orange and you have the green and you have the red, these are all from the, the bottle caps themselves. Like, I'm looking there, and I have no idea how you pulled any of that out. <laughs> I'm sitting, I'm sitting with Perfect, there's the bottle cap. Aha. Uh -huh. And that's actually the neck ring that's around the bottle that actually the cap screws into. And this is made from the exact same material as the cap itself. So this is what we're looking for? That's exactly what we're looking for. Where is it going from here? So from here, after it passes through the metal detection, it goes through a grinding process that creates a uniformity with the size. Because as you can see, we're contending with a variety of different sizes, with whole labels, different size caps. And what we want to do is create some level of consistency that allows us better separation from the process downstream. OK. What happens to all the labels on the bottles? They take them off so they can make something else that's plastic. They take it off, and they take them off and melt them and make them into new labels. Um, I think they take, rip them off the bottle and put them in a separate recycling plant. Sometimes they take it off. Um, I think they do get scraped off and they do get recycled because there's still paper. I'm not wasting them by putting them in the trash can. Okay, as we move further down the line, if I could ask you to put in your earplugs. Sure, well. sure, absolutely. Yeah, I can tell it's getting louder and louder. It is, yeah, and that's the next step in the process is the grinder, and those do tend to be a little bit louder. What? <laughs> I'm okay. All right, as it's coming down, is there anything else that's happening right here? Just spreading out the material so that it can evenly be distributed to the grinder, or the, also called a granulator, which is the next step in the process. This, right this, yes, this right here, this big piece of machinery is the louder piece and wow. is the grinder. Very loud. And that is actually sizing the material and chopping it up so that it come, becomes a uniform size as it's introduced to the wash line itself. I can feel it vibrating <laughs> right next to me. So the first step in the process is to be able to remove as much of the labels as possible prior to going to the wash line. And the reason for that is it, it prevents some of the separation as it gets into the water. Where we talked about before, where there's a separation based on density, where the caps and the labels float and the PET sink. That where we refer to here in, in California, the labels become somewhat of a surfboard, where the PET actually rides along that label yeah. and prevents the PET from sinking to the bottom of the tank. So you're trying to get as much of it out of the process as you can. Perfect, perfect. yes, exactly. Can I see the building? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is labeled. Yeah, this is primarily just labeled. So here, that you, would, you wouldn't see as much of the, the caps or the PET as, as we did at the beginning stage. You notice that it's a smaller size because mm -hmm. it's after we ground it. After that, the heavier items, are, are carried up the conveyor to the wash line, where it's introduced into water, and that's where you start to get the separation from the density, where the, the PET, or the more dense items, are sunk to the bottom of that wash tank. The other items, what we're trying to recover, the, the caps, those are floating towards the top and are moving on further down the line to be dried and be able to further process. What is this right here behind me? This material is actually the PET that was contained within the co-mingled material. This is the, the float sink process that's separating the denser items that sink to the bottom. So this is actually the bottle itself. 
and it would, when we extract this from the material, then this material becomes a good feedstock to go right back to the PEC marsh companies, such as Global, to be able to then further process the material. Wow. So this is we don't kind of, waste anything. No waste anything. This Nothing. is kind of leftover stuff they gave to you on accident. Correct. And then you're going to give it back. Correct. How nice of you. Yes. I love it. <laughs> Well, they're floating in there. They're floating in there. The PET, which we saw, is sinking to the bottom. The old bottles, the yes. leftover bottles. And then the actual caps are floating on the top to be able to then go further down the process to be dry. What's this noise I'm hearing? This is actually a fan that's actually blowing the material so to help dry the material further yeah. and then move it over to that air separation line. I'm going that way. All right. And then at the end, what we have is clean bottle caps. So, wow. So now I can see all the bottle caps. Right. Where before it was mixed with the labels and the BET, now you can see it's just 100% bottle cap material. Now, earlier Nadine said that they separate the colors of the bottles themselves. And I asked him, does it matter what color the caps are? And he said, no, no. Correct. Yeah. Why is that? When we're blending them together in the milk process, it actually blends together and becomes a gray material. And that lends itself to a variety of other colors. Obviously, the obvious one would go black or gray, or if you add some additional color to it, you're able to go other colors as well in the end product. And this last stage is just is the actual the safeguard that actually takes the additional label that made it all the way through the process and wouldn't let go. Wouldn't let go. And, and, and this is that final stage to help with the quality of the material. That's not, there's not a lot there at all. No, not at all. And that's an important stage because although the label is also polypropylene, which most of the caps are, it's a different type of polypropylene. And it melts at a different rate. So. This becomes its own finished product, as does the cap. Now, is this your final step? No, we actually then, from this step, we introduce it into the extruder, which then melts the plastic down. We do that here? We do. Yes. Oh, let's go. I didn't know there was more. Yeah, we're fully integrated. <laughs> I'm following you. All right, let's go. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Americans use over 29 billion bottles of water a year. That's a lot. We're calling this segment Joe and Joel's Recap. Get it? Nice. Yeah, because we recap. All right. All right. So let's recap. We've taken the plastic bottle that we use at our house. Correct. We put it in the recycle bin. Yes. Then it was taken back to a transfer station or a MRF where they separated everything out. And then they took it over to Global PET, where they took the bottle, shredded it up, gave you all the stuff, the bottle caps, the labels, a little bit of the bottle in with it. Correct. And then you took all the bottle caps this way, all the labels and the plastic that way. And now we have all just the bottle caps shredded up yes. going in here. Correct. So, th yeah. so this process. <laughs> So that's a recap with Joe and Joel. All right, continue on, Joe. Right. So this is the beginning of the extrusion process, where the material is introduced into a silo, which is actually mixing the material up so that it can be introduced into the extruder itself. You just want pure bottle cap at exactly. this point. Exactly. As the material comes down, it's actually being melted along the way through this screw. And Ooh. all these are very hot. You it's feel hot. the heat. Oh, right. mackerel. So then it actually begins to flow along this screw through the process where it goes through screening processes to take out contaminants that might be in that process. And then it forces, is being forced through a die to be able to turn it into pellets. OK, let's go check that out. All right. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Did you know approximately 44% of each barrel of oil is used to make rubber and plastics? Steam, this is hot, man. <laughs> so is this the die, you said die cast? Yes, it's going through a screen that actually filters out the contaminants. With, like this like right this. here, right? Yes, right, so only the, the hot 
melted plastic is allowed to pass through this screen. That is a, I mean, if you look at how small that is, that these bottle caps have to fit through here. Yes. So it's like a liquid yes. going through here. Yeah, exactly. After it goes through that screening process, it goes through small holes. It's kind of like making spaghetti. And then at very fast speed, it's chopping that, those strings into little beanies or little pellets. Is that what this thing's doing right here? This is exactly what this machine here is doing. It looks like little uh, chocolate chips in there, or gray, gray chocolate chips. Exactly. So this, this hardens the, the plastic. It, it flows up through the dryer and then down into the bag. So the water's going this way, and the uh, our bottle caps are going that way. Correct. <laughs> Careful. Are these, are these super hot? Uh, no, these aren't super hot because they've gone through the cooling process. And they come out at very fast speed. Wow. I, I, I'm going to get out of the way, man. <laughs> I feel much safer over here, Joe. <laughs> that was dangerous over there, man. They, they come out at a very fast speed. Why do the bottle caps have to turn into pellets? The quality level so that it goes, it passes through that extrusion to be in melt filtration process mm -hmm. to take out even the smallest of contaminants, which we measure in parts per million. And then as well as in the manufacturing process, the pellets flow through at a much faster pace than it would if it was in a whole bottle cap. Now, we haven't even said on the show, I mean, we're recycling these, but we haven't told you guys that we're actually gonna make something out of our old bottle caps. Yes. And we'll find out, we're not gonna reveal right now, but we'll okay. find out. Joe, I do have to say though, I think somehow you missed, something's not working in your process. Because I, that? well, because I had this, look at that, that got through. What's, the, what's up with this? So Joe, is this the end of your process? For the bottle caps, this is the end of our process, yes. All right, well Joe, I wanna thank you very much, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate your time. Our next stop, Baldwin Park. What can bottle caps turn into? A little plastic piggy bank. You can turn it into um, architects or maybe sculptures, or you can make it into plain art. A new bottle. You can turn them into anything. You can turn them into plastic containers. You can turn them into anything that's plastic. So we've taken the pellets and we brought them to Baldwin Park at UPM, where I'm here with Jeff. Jeff, what do we do with all these pellets? Well, one of the things that's underutilized are the bottle caps. It is a really strong, good plastic. But the one thing people don't realize that it, it, when they wash it, it has a ton of moisture in it. We can't process it into products unless we get the moisture out. These are as dry as they can be right now, right? Yep, and they're perfect. So they're perfect, no moisture. No moisture, no trash, no paper, no anything. So now, what do you do with them? After the plastic pellets get melted, it then it gets injected into a mold. Okay, so it's okay. like all the liquid goes and squished in there, right. right? Within one minute, the part cools and it forms into that part. So this is our final product? Yes. This these is, are bottle caps right these here? These are bottle caps, and we're now using it for another product that also helps the environment. Any thoughts to what this could be, guys? Because I'm scratching my head here. What, what do we have? Well, uh, wait, 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 don't tell me. Let me just guess. Headlights on a car. Well, no. Uh, a megaphone. Hello! No? Close. New form of handcuffs. Well, every product you buy, everything you eat, uses one of these. Um, a table. I can sit on a table. What we're making is we're making a protector of wood pallets. This helps use less trees. You've seen pallets all over the road, all over your retail stores. Everything gets moved on a pallet. Yeah. There are millions of pallets all around the world. Everything gets shipped on a pallet. Everything gets distributed on a pallet. What this does is it keeps the forklift. It keeps the pallet together. You can use a lesser wood. So I'm looking at like these pallets, these are your normal everyday pallets. Normal pallet. everyday wood pallets. That like you said, are, everything is shipped on it. Everything. everything. I mean, even behind us, they're, they're all around us. Yeah, and you know what? They break after five to six uses. This prolongs the life of a pallet 10 to 15 times longer. 
before you were able to use the bottle caps for these pallets, where were all the bottle caps going? A large number of times it was used to blend off with other plastics. It was sold at a very lesser cost, and a lot of it was sent overseas. Because it was wet, it had contaminants into it. What's a post-consumer product? I think something that the consumers put a post on. Um, a post-consumer product. I think it's a product that is able, you can recycle it. What does that mean? <laughs> a postal service? I think it's just something that you put a whole bunch of bottle caps into. I'm holy for I don't know. A post-consumer product is a product that's after the consumer uses it. So now, are you doing anything else besides making these out of bottle caps? All the big companies are saying, we want recycled products. And so it's going to drive more and more applications. But yes, we are. The bottle caps has been kind of the newest thing to use. You know, I know why all the big stores are asking for more post-consumer products, because you guys out there are asking the big stores for more recycled products. Well, Jeff, I appreciate it. Five pounds of bottle caps right here. We appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. And I want to thank Jeff, Joe, Nadine, and everyone involved in making today's episode. And I especially want to thank you, Seth, for sending us on today's Curiosity Quest Goes Green. Now, if there's something that you want to know more about, let me hear from you. Go to curiositystquest.org, click on the Send Us On A Quest link, and simply tell me what you're curious about. And it could be you that sends us on our next green adventure. And remember, it's our planet. And it's our responsibility to take care of it. So I wonder, have you gone green? I'm Joel Green, and I'll see you next time. Remember, recycle your bo bottles, all of them, including the caps. I'm out of here. Hey guys, Joel Green here, and on the next episode of Curiosity Quest Goes Green, we're gonna show you how they take all the bottle caps, all, all, all the bottle caps, and recycle them and turning them into new products on the next episode. So make sure you stay tuned and watch. So I can just sit here and do this all day long. It's raining bottle caps! Ah! I'll, I'll clean it up, sorry. I better go. If you'd like to order a copy of this episode or a previous episode, visit us at www.curiositystore.com. The cost is $24.95. This program is made possible by support from the cities of Cathedral City, Indio, Palm Springs, Palm Desert, Rancho Cucamonga, and Rancho Mirage.